You know, one thing I want to talk about is that there, for some reason, <clears throat> for some, there's a few areas, there's a few uh, videos, I think, that, uh, that, that we put out that are uh, become really points of contention and arguments amongst each other and everything. And um, I don't know what it is about cooked food, but there's, uh, is it, it's mostly face uh, it's mostly TikTok that is uh, the people there are pretty much uh, angry they're mad that 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 uh, about cooked food that is poison we, and uh, listen I want you all to stop for a moment and think about it how could it not be poison let's define it <clears throat> before we get started on these questions which are some really good questions. Let and, and this is all relevant to us all, to every one of us. Everyone is relevant. Okay, so what is food? How would you define food? Well, first of all, you need to know what species you're talking about, right? Okay, anyway, how do you define food? How do you define food? So um, food is defined really as anything that is consumed. Okay, it depends on the species, right? All right. So food, food, food for an for a, for a, for a gorilla is very different than food for an uh, for a spider. Okay, they're very different. They eat differently. They have a completely different anatomy and physiology. Okay, so that's when we're talking about food. Okay, so let's talk about food for a moment with humans. Okay, with humans. I'm going to define food, and I think you'll probably all at least accept it. I don't know. Some of you probably won't. But food is that which, when ingested, um, is able to be turned into flesh and blood. Our body is able to turn it into flesh and blood. Or energy. Okay, because we take in energy through, we produce energy in our bodies through nutrients. And uh, and those nutrients can come in the form of liquids, solids, and gases. And basically, that's the whole phenomenal universe is liquid, solids, and gases like that, right? Okay. And that all has to do with really, interestingly enough, has to do with temperature and speed and all that, which is why we want to check when we want to look for your thyroid function. Why do we, why do we look at your uh, basal body temperature what that's why it's so important because your temperature is an indication of the uh the speed of the molecules in your body right um in essence um uh, just as an aside your uh, your your immune cells are functioning best at uh 36 uh, at, at 40 40.5 centigrade or uh, about 104, 103.5, 104 Fahrenheit. Why? Because all the enzymes that are in those cells are activated around that cell. I mean, that's their optimal functioning. All right. And that's kind of the way it is. Science is pretty amazing uh, when you realize uh, how divine it is. If you realize that science is divine, I mean, what we call science is really our perspective, our view of reality. And reality is like, wow. Yeah, it's wow. Yeah. So anyway, food is that which you ingest and it becomes flesh and blood. So therefore, poison would be that which when you ingest, you cannot, you cannot turn it into flesh and blood. Number one. Uh, but instead, it can cause and will cause <clears throat> damage to your organism. And therefore, it must be eliminated. So with that perspective, we notice that all, all things that we put into our bodies have both of those. All right. So an apple, even a beautiful, perfect, organic apple, there's going to be some portion of it which you cannot assimilate, which has to come out. And you'll have, uh, it'll come out. There'll be a part of it that comes out, all right. One of the the pure, the, the um, I mean, the pure ones that come in are are usually in uh, <clears throat> water and uh, uh, oxygen. Okay, they're not eliminated until they get metabolized. 
Okay, but the um, <clears throat> same thing with the foods. So anyway, um, now, all creatures exist. I'm, I'm just going over this because there's so there's still to this day, uh, you guys are talking about it, and I don't understand it. Uh, I'll give a, I need to give a complete lecture on it, but I mean, it's, there's, it's all science. I mean, it's all, it's all been proven. It's all obvious. So, um, anyway, so then I get questions, bizarre questions like, well, then how am I going to eat chicken? How am I going to eat potatoes? How am I going to eat, uh, steak? Well, first of all, it's not steak, it's, it's dead cow. It's cow flesh. How are you going to eat the cow corpse? Well, if you don't like it the way it looks, if when you look at a piece of, when you see a dead cow, if it doesn't look appetizing to you, if you don't feel like getting down like your dog would, your cat would, smelling it and eating it, eh, it's probably not for you. <clears throat> However, if you take it, you cut it up, and you slice it up, and you fry it, and you, and you put A1 steak sauce on it, or whatever you put on it, okay? Whatever you put on it, you're in Thailand, you're going to put chili on it, whatever you're going to do, and you come and you dip it, and, you're, and you and you got your little finger up, and you're eating very daintily and very cool and very, very uh, civilized. Um, you're eating a piece of corpse that you've uh, uh, made delicious. Now, so if you can eat it, uh, if you eat it plain, <clears throat> just eat the animal. Eat the animal. Kill the animal, or most of you don't kill the animals, right? Most of you hire someone to kill them. And then you then they bring it to the to the market where you purchase it, right? So there's several steps removed. I mean, that's just one thing. So anyway, what I'm saying, and then the other part of it is this. <clears throat> so you can't eat it in its raw condition, in its natural condition. You wouldn't. A lion will, a dog will, a raccoon will. A rat will, a bear will, they will, 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 and a lion, tiger, leopard, all that. Okay, they will. For us, because it's against our nature. Oh, why did I say that? Yes, I did. It's against our nature. What do we do? We wind up cook, he, applying heat to it. And, and, we, and we change the name. I'm not going to call it dead cow. I don't want it. I'm going to call it steak. I'm not going to call it dead pig. I'm going to call it sausages. I'm going to call it bacon. I'm going to call it pork chops. I like those names better, right? You like those names better? Yeah. So we, we anyway, we do all that. But but here's the thing. Here's the thing. When now, now, everything is biodegradable, right? Everything that nature produces is biodegradable. If a tree dies, an animal dies, anything like that, it becomes part of the earth again, okay? It's got internal... Uh, enzymes that allow that to happen, plus all the bacteria and the funguses and the um, uh, insects and all that, they take all of this organic matter and they recycle it and turn it back into, in fact, most, most of that is done by, is by uh, microorganisms. Turn it back into soil, which then again becomes the, the plant. And then the animal is the plant. The animal eats the plant, the plant, and the animal becomes the animal. Um, all right, so but that, that's how it goes. It's called biodegradable. Well, the enzymes, enzymes have again, like, like everything I said, I said everything has an ultimate, uh, has an, uh, uh, an optimal um, a pH, has, has an optimal um, um, uh, temperature. Okay, the optimal temperature of our body is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 37 degrees centigrade. Okay, so and up to 100. And then I said the white blood cells really function good. At 40, 40.5, up to maybe even 41 centigrade, um, and that's 104, 105 Fahrenheit. But above that, they have trouble. Then when you get up to 118 Fahrenheit or 48 or 49 centigrade, they permanently, the, the enzymes permanently lose their structure. Sorry, I didn't make that up. I'm not the author of nature. I am part of nature. Like you. We're all part of nature. We're all an aspect of nature. We're all earthlings. You know? The earth is apple trees. Apple. They produce apples, right? Pear trees. Pear. They produce pears. And the earth peoples. And the earth elephants. Yeah. And these, are, these are the fruits of the earth. Yeah, we are part of that. Anyway. 
endowed with the spirit of God, endowed with the divine breath of life, the, the divine breath of God. And when that breath leaves you, this body will turn back to earth. Just the way it is. Just the way it is. <clears throat> not made up, not an opinion. Anyway, so. Now, that's one thing. You, uh, so so if to boil water or to, to produce steam, you have to get up to 100 degrees centigrade, which is 212 degrees. 12 degrees Fahrenheit. Long gone dead. Enzymes don't work anymore. So now we don't have, you know, I don't like this. I can't see this live here. Are you guys sure I'm on uh, Facebook? Anybody tell me? Because I don't see any chat. Overlay. Need help? Yeah, need help. I need help. Yeah, where's my chat? You rate this. Con what? Get out of here. I uh, am. Yeah. Well, let's see what they say. Anyway, uh, yeah, yeah, I was going back and forth. So, okay, good. So, you're good. Oh, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Going back and forth. <clears throat> anyway, I go on. I'm on Restream, whatever that is. Restream is supposed to allow us to do uh, Facebook, Insta. Is Facebook what? And uh, YouTube and uh, LinkedIn, right? So anyway, uh, anyway, so what I wanted to say was this. So listen very carefully. It's very important. Okay, get this, get this, get this. Okay. So when you heat up this thing, the enzymes are dead, which means it's no longer biodegradable, right? It's no longer. Now it'll be taken over. It'll be biodegraded. Believe me. If an animal, if even a fried animal has died, is, is put into the ground, the insects and the and, and, every, and everything will take over. It will do it. <clears throat> in our body, it's a different story. Now, in our body, we eat something that has been had the enzymes removed. We steam a potato, a sweet potato, delicious. We steam it. We eat it. It no longer is. There, it doesn't go through that part. That's that's. Uh, Um, yeah, so so uh, when we eat it, normally food when we eat food, it goes into the upper part of our stomach, and then it auto digests, and then it goes down into the lower part of the stomach where it gets more digestion, and then it goes into the small intestines, and the pancreas does its job. All right. So now, but when we eat it, and it's been had the enzymes removed, now none of that happens. It all requires pancreatic and stomach. Uh, overwork and they overwork for decades and decades and decades. They become enlarged, they become inefficient, and blah 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 blah. Okay, that's number one. That's if you just steam and boil, but we don't. If you fry, if you bake, if you grill, if you do anything else, you what happens is that heat and the loss of moisture is a chemical reaction that produces what are called Maillard chemicals. Chefs know them very well. And yes, as one of you people pointed out on, on Facebook, uh, on, on TikTok, that that is acrylamide. Acrylamide is one of them, is one of them. But there are other Maillard chemicals. And that's why food tastes good, smells good. That's why when you walk in the house at night, you uh, you walk into your favorite restaurant and you say, oh, you smell it. Okay, it's the, it's the, it's the browning of toast. It's the burnished color of coffee it's the beer the color of beer all this stuff it's all may large chemicals okay good they are poison not all of them 100 percent poison no not all of them no but they are poisons so they are so when you when you produce maillard chemicals now do maillard chemicals occur naturally no forest fires yes lightning strikes you got a forest fire yes but other than that they don't because they require that the heat that the it's so hot that the actual moisture and there's moisture everywhere most of the water in our bodies guess where is in our tissues no it's in our blood it's in our cells all right so anyway just i just wanted you to make a all right yeah so it's it's very important to, it's a very important thing to understand you guys got to understand this and tiktok 
people, please understand. I don't make this up because I, I, I grew up eating cooked food. What do you think I am? Yeah. Huh? What do you think I am? Do you think I'm from another planet? Don't answer that. Anyway, I'm not from another planet. Kind of wish I could go to one, um, but uh, I'm not from one. Anyway, the point is this. Uh, the, uh, uh, <clears throat> the So the cooked food is now seen by the body. It can't be used. You can't do much with it. You can get little bits of it out, but it takes a lot of work and it wipes you out. Look at somebody who's eating the big, look at somebody who's eating the dinner. Go out to dinner with some people and let them eat a regular meal. And you eat just a normal, you eat like salads, fruit. You're not going to be tired. They're going to be tired. You're not going to get sleepy. You're not going to get sleepy because it's not requiring your energy. It's producing energy. Yeah. And I'm not going to go into it any deeper than that right now because it's not the time to do it. What do you get for a day? What do you get for a day? What produces these chemicals? What produces heat? 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 A above a certain heat? Takes what they call the reducing sugar and an amino acid and puts them together and produces what's called a Maillard chemical. Look it up. It's there. It's a Maillard chemical. It's what chefs learn. Chefs learn about this to make food delicious. All right. Acrylamide is a neurotoxin and a carcinogen, and it's produced in anything baked or anything breads. OK, so I'm just saying. And plus, I have people that come to me who are very, very sick. Not all of them are very sick, but they come and they're sick. They're sick. And they and then what do they do if they go on 100 percent uncooked food? What is uncooked food? It's the food that the earth produced for us. Us humans, right? The food produced food for ants. It produced food for uh, parrots. It produced food for caterpillars. It produced food for bears and rats, raccoons. It produced food for humans, too. Food, food, that is nourishment that these organisms need to survive, to replenish the cells. How many cells are we replenishing? 37 million per second. We're doing that, that we're doing that. Yeah, we're doing that. 37 million per second, okay? So uh, we need some, we need a good pool of nutrients. And those nutrients are is, 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 is stuff that could be converted, okay? So there's nothing, I, I don't know what to say about that. So what would be the perfect diet? Obviously, it would be eat, eat foods that are, that are the way earth, earth produced it. That's real food. That's real food. What, what do we do when we get a hold of something? What do we do to it? Humans. We turn it into artifact. That's what archaeologists look for. Artifact. Artificial. We produce that which is artificial. God produces that which is natural. And is enduring. And has intelligence. His intelligence. That it's intelligence. Shall we do some questions since that's why we got here today? Let's see. What, how do we get iron? How do you get iron? Iron, it comes from the, iron is in the earth. How does the animal get iron? Animals get iron. Oh, by the way, what does the animal eat? What do lions eat? Vegetarian. Where did the vegetarian get its iron? So it gets it from the animal. Where would that animal get it? Got it from eating the plants. So the plants pick up the iron, they pick up the magnesium, they pick up the calcium, they pick up the boron, they pick up the selenium, they pick up the, um, uh, you name it, magnesium. It doesn't matter. They pick it all up and they use it. They chelate it. It becomes part of their thing, part of their makeup. And then you eat the plant and that's how you get it. But now it's bioavailable because if you were to just pick up and eat iron, you're not going to you'd be able to absorb it. So that's how we get it. That's how we get iron. That's how we get magnesium. That's how we get all those things. Yeah, that's it. It's pretty, pretty cool. And don't be upset about it. Be happy. Be happy that you found out the truth. 
And I'm not making this stuff up. Why would it, why would it make it up? How? Why would it? It does. It's not make upable. Our, our root canals bad. I just, uh, you know, let me just take one second with root canals. It's the only, you know what taxidermy is? Anybody know what taxidermy is? Taxidermy, taxidermy. Yeah, I'm ima- I'm going to imagine. I can't see Facebook. I wish I could, I like Facebook's comments. So I can't see them. But uh, uh, imagine taxidermy. You guys can see each other, so I know you're answering each other. But taxidermy is uh, uh, where they take an, a- you know, like they take an animal. Do you remember anybody see, uh, what was that? Uh, Psycho, the TV show Psycho, right? The kid liked being a, a taxidermist. They take dead animals and then they, they clean out their innards and then they stuff them with something uh, and, and that preserves them somehow. And then they have the an- they have the shell of the animal sitting there for looks, you know. That's taxidermist. So you can go to taxidermist. And if you loved your pet poodle and you wanted to keep its body and looking, right, they could do that. Anyway, there's things like that. Uh, well, that's what that's what the root canal says. Taxidermy in the mouth. They take out the they take out the blood vessels. They take out the roots, uh, the the nerves, out of the root of the tooth, which is embedded in the bone of the tooth of the jaw. And uh, then they fill it up with cement, and then they put a crown on top of it, so you can still use it. Well, now that bone is dead. It hasn't have blood supply, so it doesn't have any any immune cells going in there. So those immune cells can't go in there and protect it from all the microorganisms. How many microorganisms? There are billions and trillions and trillions in our mouths. The dirtiest mouths in the world are humans' mouths, dirtier than dogs' mouth. When you say that's dirty as a dog, well, our mouths are do- are dirtier because I can sew up your hand after I've cleaned it off if you got a big, deep dog bite. But if you got a big, deep human bite, I can't because it's going to get infected. It's dirtier mouths, okay? So, um, anyway, all that stuff goes into the the uh, uh, into those areas, and there's no immune system, so it's like party time. It's like the kids are there for the summer, and the parents went on vacation, right? So they, that's what that, that that's what happens with root canals. Now these root now now these these microorganisms are just eating and and and, and uh, mutating and becoming different things, and you know they're pleomorphic and all that. But as they do, they produce toxins. And since they're biological entities, these toxins are called biotoxins. And these biotoxins cause everything from what we now, what some of us call, what, 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 what they call ALS, uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, uh, multiple sclerosis, different kinds of, 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 of neurological conditions, Lou Gehrig's disease, which is, which is ALS. Um, but other one, they, a, a cancer there's many different metabolic pathways that it can go down that these cause. There's probably nothing more dangerous in the world than that. Now, if you don't have a root canal, then you can have a cavitation in your mouth. And a cavitation means in the bone above the roots, there's a hole. And in there, there's microorganisms growing. Now, an empty cavitation is an empty cavitation, and it's fine. But it's, you know, who knows if it's going to stay that way. Um and I don't know. Yeah, I don't even know how you get them because I'm not a dentist. I didn't study that because for some reason, who knows what it is. But the world decided that the mouth was not part of the body. So this, somehow these professions got separated and doctors became doctors and dentists became dentists. What the heck? It's another madness. But I mean, it's been on for hundreds and hundreds of years. It's been thousands of years. It's dentists. So it's, uh, it's bizarre. I want the mouth, I want the teeth to come back to the mouth, uh, to the body and be part of medical curriculum and uh, all that sort of thing. That's what I want to see happen. So um, anyway, so I got 63 of you from uh, there. That's good. I don't know if you're YouTube or your Facebook or what, but anyway, I'm glad you're all here. Thank you. Thanks for joining you guys. Um, of course, I don't know what's going on with TikTok. But anyway, I, I just hope you guys understand about cooked food. I don't just say these things to, to piss you guys off. You know, it's not what I don't want to piss anybody off. I piss so many people off without even trying. I mean, I mean, why would I try? Yeah. Uh, I don't mean to piss people off. I'm just here to tell you guys what I found out. 
hey, I've been on this journey for a long time. You guys are longer than most of you. And I found some stuff out, so I want to share it. So that's it. That's it. And I want to help people. I like that. You know, I get off on that. That's what makes me happy is making people better, helping people, and just waking people up. If I had to be called anything, call me the waker upper. Huh? I just like to wake people up. Yeah, I love it. Not, I mean, if you're sleeping. I get in trouble for that. But um, anyway, so um, let's go to some questions. Now, I'm gonna start, I'll start with Instagram, and then I'll, I'll, I'll go through each of the different places. But Instagram, some, some was saying to me, well, that's small. Don't I have some? I have, I have some different classes. Ah, these might help you. Ah, here's that book I was telling you guys about. If you can see this, Nutritional Biochemistry. I don't know if you saw this. Nutritional Biochemistry. Gabby, you know, Bazan and Gabby, it was uh, Jonathan Wright was involved with. And here's another Nutritional Biochemistry. But anyway, they, uh, these guys are all the references in the world. All this stuff is real science. Right, let me change these glasses. These are for reading small things. Ah, would love for you to add more information to the titles of your podcast so that they are easier to find. Okay, podcasts. All right, so then that's a guy named Keith who's help, doing, helping me with that. Uh, I, I, I will definitely bring that up to him. And then... Uh, just read that vitamin E is uh, a superpowers when it comes to cancer. Your thoughts? Ah, oh, well, vitamin E. Actually, uh, what we call vitamin E is uh, two two fundamental groups of, of oils that plants make substances that plants make. They're called tocopherols and tocotrienols. There's and there's a uh, four of each. Alpha, beta, delta, and epsilon, or gamma, whatever. Um, alpha, beta, delta, and gamma. Yeah. Anyway, um, and they actually do two different things. Our body likes alpha, um, and 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 what they do is it, really a powerful. It does a very very important thing. Um, uh, is that it blocks the propagation of uh, lipid peroxidation. Well, what the heck is he talking about? She is. Okay, what I'm talking about is this. Oxidation, we all know what the word oxidation is. It produces free radicals. Well, when oxidation occurs to a, an, a, an atom or to an, a, a molecule, it's called, you produce a free radical. But when it's happening to fats, and remember, membranes, around cells are fats membranes around mitochondria are fats membranes around ribosome membranes around uh, the nucleus membranes inside the cell they're all fats made of fats okay now when they start to get oxidized it's called peroxidation lipid peroxidation and that's dangerous because now you're going to disrupt the cell structure okay so if it wasn't for vitamin e our cells would just be getting ripped up Okay, not not you know not only vitamin E, cholesterol does this, this is a very similar thing. Cholesterol is very important in that regard because it sticks in; it's it's kind of embedded in our cell structures, and it's kind of there, right? So our body needs it. That's why we make it. That's why it's found in all animals. It's not found in plants; it's found in animals, um, and it's a necessary thing. And it turns out, but it, but in nature, I mean, one thing that's really remarkable, and everybody's got to remember this, is that. Um, Nowhere in nature does something do one thing except enzymes. Enzyme, if it's a decarboxylase, it's a decarboxylase. But it may decarboxylate many different uh, molecules. However, it's only going to do that. But hormones and other enzymes, I mean, hormones are going to be doing uh, many, many, many different things. Okay, so, and, and same with the phytonutrients, etc. So, um, Anyway, so it blocks this propagation of lipid peroxidation, which is very, very important. Because think about something. Think about this really carefully. Everybody listen very carefully. Think about this. Let me make sure there's enough people listening. Are enough people listening? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Longevity. 
the length of life, the length of one's life is inversely proportional to the peroxidizability index of your mitochondrial membrane. Now I'm going to put that in English. The length of your life is absolutely 100% related to the integrity, the strength of the membranes in your mitochondria, which are the ones that produce energy, which, and then remember the mitochondria are on, are come from our, uh, our maternal. There's some controversy now that can be uh, pa uh, paternal as well, um, but uh, mostly maternal. It's our mater, because it's the X chromosome, but, um, but anyway, it's the strength of those. So when we look at long-lived animals, elephants and you know giraffes and stuff like that, they have you know they have very powerful uh, mitochondrial membrane um, with um, um, well, well, well they're biphospholipid, just like our plasma membrane around around the whole cell. But they're power, they're double envelope kind of thing. They're very powerful. And they're made of fats. And where are they getting those fats from? What you're putting in your mouth. So if your fats, if your mitochondria are made from KFC, if your mitochondria are made from uh, Pizza Hut, okay, and you don't feel good, you don't have any energy, and you're weak, okay. If you're 12 years old, 18 years old, 22 years old, you can do anything you want to do. 25 years old, do anything you want to do. Drink, do smoke all night, do it all night. Where do you hit 30? Where do you hit 35? Where do you hit 40? Okay. You think you're, everyone thinks about me. Guy's crazy. How do I know? Because I had, because I grew up on this planet. And then I raised kids on this planet. What did I see? The same thing. I saw me living again. That's what. Kids are giving you a chance to watch, to uh, experience life, object, experience the growing up that you did as a child instead of subjectively as objectively. You know, it, it's a kind of a weird thing, but it's really amazing. Um, anyway, so that is so vitamin E. So it's anyway, lipids, lipids, fats, fats. That's why I'm always saying eat fat. Eat fat. Forget all these guys. I have greatest respect for Joel Furman. For I mean, there's so many fantastic people out there that are so much smarter than me. I mean, uh, I mean, real, I'm serious. I'm not just saying that. These guys are smart, 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 smart. I'm not that smart, and um, yeah, I just stick with it. <laughs> but these guys are smart, and uh, but I don't know. A lot of smart people out there, but they haven't figured out certain things that are just obvious to me. So, uh, it's just a couple holes here and there. We all have holes. Uh, I take ibuprofen with Herbomed. Herbomed. I'm not sure what that is. Well, I mean, if you're taking ibuprofen, you're taking anti-inflammatories. If you're taking those for a reason, you know... Uh, and it allows you to function like, you know, bad headaches or you got, you know, like I recently had my, this problem with my deltoid. I don't know what it is, but anyway, if it's going to help you get through it, it's not going to be that big a deal. Don't take a ton of it, but, but when you need it, you need it. It's much better than a narcotic. Okay. Much better than a narcotic. You can take, you know, and depending on who, you know, you can take, some people take 800, 800 milligrams, three or four times a day or a thousand milligrams, three or four times, whatever, you know, but, uh, you know, the other thing is try to get to the root. The, the important thing with any symptom anywhere, get to the root, find out what's causing it, get rid of that cause, and the whole thing stops. So anyway, but getting back to vitamin E, um, uh, what did I say? What was that question again? Um, yeah. Okay. So, so uh, the uh, the uh, interesting thing about the 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 the, the tocopherols and tocotrienols between vit in vitamin E, right? Um, is that the, uh, uh, there's, there's, you know, there's, there's alpha, beta, delta, and epsilon of, of tocopherols. So we absorb them all, but the liver, when it plays around with it and does this thing, gets it already, is only excreting the alpha. The alpha seems to be the one that's really important for us as an antioxidant, as an antioxidant, very, very important. Okay. 
very, very important. I'm trying to make this there. I got with ship with it there. Yeah, anyway. Okay, so um is that better? Okay, so 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 now toko trienol is our whole different story. Cause now, now what's the difference between uh 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 tocopherol and a toko trienol? Where they're both vitamin E, nothing. I mean, not nothing, but it's, very, it's a molecular thing that, that no one needs to know except the guy that's going to do research in that area. But other than that, tocotrienol is very, very simple. simple. But they're, anyway. Uh, but they're different because what they do is um, uh, it turns out that tocotrienols, um, there's been some amazing studies. I found one study that was is, is beautiful. Um, um, anyway. I can't find it, but anyway, with tocotrienols, um, equally as effective in killing estrogen receptor positive and negative. So triple negative breast cancer doesn't respond to much, but tocotrienols it does. And the other thing too, people think about triple negative breast cancer is not going to respond to um, uh, a lot of the, the, the um, Uh, they call them. They call it immuno um, uh, immuno oncology or onco immunology, whatever the hell they want to. However, they want to put it together and sound smart. Okay, they're so smart. Oh my god, are they smart? Oh my god, these doctors are so so smart. I want my son to be a doctor. Oh. Unbelievable. Um, they're so smart because they have all these words. Well, yeah, talk to an IT guy. They're pretty smart, you know. They got got a lot. Now you got a lot of words. They can do a lot of things. Talk to a, a, a good plumber. How about you? How about your house is you don't have a plumber? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? What about no one stop? How about people stop picking up the trash? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Okay, just a message there. Every one of us is important. As everyone else. Oh yeah, no, oh, even I'm even talking about. Oh, shh, Brad Pitt and Angelina. Look, I know. I no. They're gonna get paid twenty five million dollars for making a movie, and here's a person who's teaching. Who's working all day long to to, to the, helping people tremendously in many different ways, whatever they're doing, sweeping. Okay, don't sweep. See what happens. Don't empty the garbage. See what happens. Okay, you think it's not important, but it's worth nothing in our society. Nothing. Why? Okay, I'm sorry to get on these things, but I can't help it. Why? Because the human race, and the reason we're going to fail again. The reason we're going down is because there are two things that lead, that 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 motivate humans. What are they? Vanity and greed. Vanity and greed. Vanity and greed. In fact, greed is a an offspring of vanity. Instead of what? What could replace those things? Love and compassion. Love and compassion. But the human race doesn't do that. Look where we're look where we're at. Look where we're at. Look what's going on. Why are we, are we really going to continue to ask each other why is this happening to us? Because we deserve it. Look at human history. Look at all the human history: rape, murder, killing, pillage. When we talk about history, what is history? Any history majors, you talk about rulers, rulers and wars, not the common person. That's what the anthropologist is talking about. Hey, tocotrienols are amazing. They also are really good for, blo uh, for uh, helping with estrogen blocking. They're very amazing. So vitamin E, and you can get that from foods. You know, tocotrienols are in everything. Vitamin E is in there. I mean, all seeds and nuts, lots of plants and berries. Yeah, it turns out, I'm sorry to say to all those people who don't want to hear it, 
Just sorry to say, but it turns out if you eat lots of plants, lots of seeds, lots of nuts, you're going to be healthy. And oxalates, I'm going to talk about oxalates because that really gets me upset that there's this whole big thing about oxalates. And yes, I know David Wolf. I have a, I used to lo- really like the guy a lot. And um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Whatever, him and then uh, whoever else. I can't, I, I can, what can I say? I'm just going to tell you what I find, okay? What I found, what I know. All right. Um, I've been, I've been, I have a, I have a clinic. The one clinic, the, the, the one clinic in the U S has been around, but this is our 18th year. Okay. 18th year. I don't know. hundred thousand. I don't know how many people have come through our clinic. They all drink tons of green juice and eat lots of oxalates and we're not seeing kidney stones. Kidney stones, oxalate, calcium oxalate, the biggest, the form of of uh, of, 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 of the, the 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 most prominent um, stone. Um, um, what are really factors? As- acidity and dehydration. Yeah, 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 yeah. Again, don't believe me. Fe- don't ever believe me. Just look it up if you don't believe me. All right. Now, here's a good question. Are cravings for certain foods a sign of of deficiency? I crave eggs often. Um, You know, that's a good question. Now, um, the answer, as usual, is uh, yes and no. Mostly no. Where do cravings come from? How does one know they have a craving? We should play. What's that? What's that music? Okay. Where do cravings come from? The mind. Therefore, it's an appetite. If you think you crave eggs, if you grew up in a culture where you never ate eggs, you couldn't crave them. If you grew up in a culture where you ate lots of, uh, uh, you ate um, tarantulas, You'd crave tarantulas. If you grew up in a culture where you grew, where you, where you ate lots of uh, monkey, live monkey brain, you'd crave you'd crave live monkey brain. It's just the way it is. Okay, so most uh, most now, it's not to say that the like for example the kids eating paint off the wall are not perhaps some sort of mineral deficiency and they're getting the lead. I, I don't know. That again is a, it's a hypothesis. It's a hypothesis. The kids are hungry. The paint tastes good. I remember eating, uh, was it dirt or something as a kid? Huh. I didn't have any, defi- I don't think I was deficient, but I, who knows? I didn't, it. Typical Italian American diet, probably deficient. Yeah, but anyway, um, uh, no, I, I don't think so. I think most cravings are beca- out of our minds. They they come from our mind. Remember, hunger hunger is a uh, is is a set a set of uh, physiological responses um, that result in obtaining food to set uh, obtaining substances to satisfy either or and a nutrient and or energy deficit yeah who i mean you, we grew up with it who of course who doesn't like and love boiled eggs or Stuff, stuff, boiled eggs, or scrambled eggs. I mean, as Americans, and I don't know about uh, Europeans as much as I mean, Europeans also <gasps> definitely not in Asia. They don't 
think about eggs the way we do. In Asia, every country I've been to in Asia, what they would eat for dinner is the same thing they would eat for breakfast and lunch. So they don't distinguish. You know how we are, right? We for breakfast we have you know eggs and toast and sausage and 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 pancakes and French toast and cereal and stuff like that, right? No, they're gonna have miso if they're from Japan. They have miso soup and 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 and, and some rice and some fish. If they're from Thailand, they're gonna have the same thing they had for di dinner. It's just they're not, you know, very close. So okay, so we're the only ones. Uh, so really, we got to remember something. That our cravings are from our upbringing. Okay, so radioactive iodine safe for thyroid cancer or just surgery best if needed? Okay, so good question. Good question. Uh The conventional, for anybody with thyroid cancer, you know, there's medullary, there's anaplastic, there's follicular and uh, papillary. Uh, and the papillary and the follicular are the mildest and the, and the most common. Um, and, uh, of course, the uh, recommendation of the... Um, now, I want to I tell you something. I mean, uh, <clears throat> the medical profession is a... Um, uh, the whole AMA, the whole... All the algorithms are just so that everybody on the team can get paid. Everybody on the team can get paid. So the algorithms that they follow to, so that they can tell you some, give you advice, because the advice did not come from the fact that they said, aha, I, I, I think this will be best for my patient. They don't think that. They don't think that. They don't think that. They don't think. They don't think. What they do is follow algorithms. If that's thinking, then yes, they think. To me, that's what you call artificial intelligence. So these machines that we have do not have artificial intelligence. They are, they're artificial idiots. They don't know anything. If you make a mistake while you're dictating, the phone doesn't know what the hell it's talking about. Okay, These are artificial idiots, right? Why? Because they're made from who? From us. What are we? Artificial intelligence. We're not real intelligence. Real intelligence, you want to find real intelligence, you go out in the jungle and you meet some guys that, that grew up out there. You're going to find some real intelligence. All right. Yeah, they don't know when George Washington first smoked a joint. Nah, they don't know that. And they don't know uh, the date of uh, uh, the War of 1812. Mm -hmm. And they don't know any of that, but there's more intelligence. What we know is, how do I say, uh, irrelevant for the most part. Uh, anyway, so what they would have us do with, with thyroid cancer is do surgery. And they've got all these statistics, the nonsense statistics that they have. Remember, all their statistics come from the people that do what they say, follow their rules, fall into their database. Therefore, that's where the statistics come from. They don't come from the people that don't do what they say. They don't have any data on the people who don't do what they say. But what we do know from their search, from their, their uh, research is that uh, we, we do know that, you know, here, here's a, this is from ACTA Endocrinology 2018, in conclusion, iodine deficiency may be a risk factor for follicular cancer, carcinoma, uh, yeah, follicular thyroid cancer. Maybe? No, no, no. <clears throat> it's like, for example, okay, I got an idea. I, I, here's something for, for cooked food, okay, TikTok. Here's the thing. Uh, uh, what were they saying? that? Um, ah, I forget. Anyway, one of the Maillard chemicals. <clears throat> Every animal that was exposed to it died. So what was their conclusion about humans? It may be a carcinogen, uh, a car I mean, got cancer. It may be a carcinogen for, for humans. Oh. oh, because we're different, right? We're, we're not the same. 
We're not the same, are we? Are we the same? Oh, 99% same DNA as a chimp. 98% same DNA as a gorilla. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have 48, uh, 46 chromosomes. They have 48 chromosomes. So there's some absolutely differences, but, but four-chamber heart, we have a four-chamber heart. Dogs, four-chamber heart, we have a four-chamber heart. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, yeah, a lot of similarities between all of the life forms here. Imagine that. But, Acryl, uh, acryl, uh, 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 the malar chemical is not gonna. We don't know if it'll hurt us. Anyway, anyway. So while iodine supplementation has has been temporarily associated with an increase in thyroid incidence, a clear cause and effect relationship is not established. Therefore, we should we should continue global iodination programs and educate the public, as well as advocacy groups. In other words, they don't know what they're talking about. They don't know what they're talking about. Again, they don't know what they're talking about. You know what? I, uh, and, and, and I get reminded every day when I talk to everybody that I talk to every day. Why do they come? If these guys knew what the hell they were doing, why would anyone ever come to me? They come to me because these guys don't know what they're doing. And they and, and they wind up saying, I'm sorry, there's nothing else I can do. I tried everything. No, you didn't try everything. What you did was follow your algorithm. You didn't try everything. And none of these studies, none of these studies compare, never compare to someone who's eating raw food, healthy food, going to bed early, doing all the things that we talk about. None of it's compared to it. So, I'm, okay, so should you get, okay, should, radioactive iodine is the question. No. And after that, no. And then once again, no. Why no? Radioactive iodine means it's going to destroy every, so what happens to most people is they cut out the, uh, they cut out the thyroid and then they're afraid, well, there might be a thyroid there. there, 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 there. So let's just get this because the thyroid is going to suck up that iodine. And you got to hear what they said. I, mean, I got I to gotta tell you what they said. I, I, um, it's shocking. It's shocking how how little, I mean, how much they don't, not only don't know, not only don't know, but they tell you the public as if it were the truth. Here's what they said. This is in a study. In fact, this is from, what, what is a big group? The Moffat Yeah, yeah, Moffitt, uh, uh, Moffitt Cancer Center. The scientists and clinicians in our thyroid center clinic are continually exploring new ways to increase the effectiveness of radioactive iodine therapy in destroying follicular thyroid cancer cells that remain after surgery. Our endocrinologist, specialists in hormones, and nuclear specialists offers individualized advice on how to prepare for a... I thought I saved that. Anyway, here's the thing that blew me away. They said that. Okay, so okay, anyway, but going back to the uh, radioactive iodine, just to let you know, there's a small percentage of people who are going to get leukemia from the iodine. Acceptable to them, not not to you, right? Not to you. Acceptable to them. But let me tell you one other thing. And, oh, here it is. So in order to produce the... Ah, okay. So listen to this. This, this, this is what they think is true. And I, and, and I don't even have to tell you guys. You'll know. In order to produce thyroid hormone, the thyroid gland must receive iodine, which is not naturally produced by the body. Instead, the thyroid must derive iodine from certain foods such as table salt, seafood, and dairy products. What? No. No. Seafood, you mean you mean shrimp, you mean lobster, they don't have much iodine. Wakame can wakame 
a seaweed can pull out 30,000 times the concentration of iodine from the seawater to itself. You eat one wakame, you've eaten 4,000 uh, shrimp, okay? That's not true. Now, RAI treatment takes advantage of a unique characteristic of thyroid cells, which are the only cells in the body that are capable of absorbing iron from the bloodstream. What? How can they put that on their website? How can I put that on their website? You know, I told you before, and, and, and again, if you don't believe me, you look it up. The, the, the mechanism by which the thyroid picks up iodine is because on its surface, it has what's called a sodium iodide transporter system, very similar to the sodium potassium system, right? The cell pulls in sodium, pushes out potassium. The cell pulls in iodine, pushes out uh, sodium. Um, the breasts during pregnancy pull in more iodine than the thyroid. Why? Because you don't do that, your child will be born mentally retarded. That's right. I mean, because it... It needs it from your milk. It needs iodine from your milk. It needs thyroid to make its thyroid. So for them to put that on their website is absurd. So whatever they say from then on, you forget. The answer is this. Uh, um, radioactive iodine. No, most people get radioactive. Now, now they've, they've taken out your thyroid. They've destroyed the rest of it. You've got a good chance of getting leukemia. Um, and you're going to have to take their thyroid medicine. They're going to put you on some synthetic synthroid they're rarely going to put you on synthetic T3, which is cytomel, which they should. Um, but instead, you can take you could, if you've already had your thyroid out. Don't worry, you can still take natural hormones. Um, and um, anyway, so uh, yeah, 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 no, 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 no. Um, and as we talked before, when we cut something out, we actually release the minor metastases that have already occurred long time ago. We release them from being restricted for from growing a blood supply, and then they grow a blood supply, and that's a big, big problem. So, um, yeah. Anyway, so uh, what was that? Yes, armor, Westroid, Thyra. I like Thyravans because Thyravans comes from uh, New Zealand, where hopefully they still have. Uh, organic cows and sheep. And the reason I had to start doing that is because um, I had a lot of patients from the Middle East who are Muslim and Muslims won't eat pork, just like uh, Jews won't eat pork. So um, they don't, uh, it's, in, it's in their religion. So uh, sheep and cows are okay. But then I had Hindus who didn't want to have it from a cow and Buddhists and the Buddhists who didn't want to have it from a cow. So, uh, and we found New Zealand. It's called Thyrovance. Um, and so it turns out that sheep are the only animal that people say, it's, ah, it's okay, we can kill them. Anyway. Um, so yeah, Thyrovance. You can get it there. What natural hormone that replaces levothyroxine? Levothyroxine is just T4. And remember something, you guys. T4 is not active. It has to be converted to T3. And in order to be converted to T3, there's an enzyme called diiodinase. And that enzyme requires selenium. So if you're selenium deficient, you will not be able to convert your T4 to T3. And that'll be a big problem. So the best thing to do is to get something like from... Now, now, thyroid hormone is conserved vertically through species. So basically what a horse is making and a pig is making and a dog is making and a human is making, all pretty much the same. Very minor differences. Same with insulin. That's why when we first found insulin in 1931, what did we do? We got it from a pig and everybody got it. Some people finally got allergic because they're allergic to whatever. Um, but they didn't get allergic to their bacon. Thank God. Uh, 
Um, all right, so let's go beyond. Come on, I, I know. I it's, you know what? It's ridiculous. I can't get to all your questions, um, but um, I can't. Uh, I I got to go to another another uh, thing besides uh, because what time is it? Yeah, yeah. Thoughts on, uh, okay, real quick, I had, I said, uh, Instagram, thoughts on ozone nasally and rectally. Rectally, fine, not nasally. You can't, the only place in the body where ozone will cause damage is when it gets into the lungs. So if you do anything nasally, you're going to wind up getting uh, uh, getting into your lungs. It's And that's, it's dangerous. Okay, so. Do I, okay, uh, yeah, no, it's not a matter of the question here. Do you believe that if you biopsy can cancer, it triggers it to grow or spread? So it's not a belief, it's a not, it's, it's something I know, it's true, it's no, I know it. I mean, if I, I, I can, I, 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 let me, let me find, let me, see. let me see if I can find, whoops, no, not that, maybe I can find for you the, the, a, a, a paper. A paper, so you can you. you I mean, I I, th I think I saved these somewhere. Come on, what, what I have it under? Um, that's the problem. I don't know. I don't remember how I think, so I don't really know why. Uh, where I would have put this? Eh, what a shame. But anyway, ba basically, what it does. Oh, it's probably on the other one. Yeah. Basically, what it does is um, you have no help to me. Thanks. Don't ask me if I need help again. Um, yeah, basically, what it does is when you do that, like I said, uh, because of the angiogenic cytokines and chemicals produced and all that, um, so that the primary tumor can grow, it's kind of preventing it from happening elsewhere. When you do that, once you release that, you end that, then then, then the uh, uh, the primary tumor, then, then the the the, uh, the little met metastasis can grow anywhere. You don't remember how you think. Yeah, I don't remember how I think. In other words, if I thought at that moment that I should put this under the surgery or should I put it under the biopsy or should I put it under angiogenesis because it has to do with angiogenesis. That's what I mean by that. It's not that I don't remember how I think. Okay. Was that a nice question or was that a question to... Anyway, that's why I do that because, I mean... I, I got to figure out how to, well, I got to figure out where, where should I put something like that? I guess I should put it under surgery and then I got to have biopsy and then I got uh, other sections like that. So that it'll be easy for me to find. So I don't remember how I was thinking at the moment. Sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Sorry. I didn't realize that. that you. Okay. I apologize. I'm just, uh, yeah, I don't remember how I think when I think. Uh, okay, so um, so anyway, it's true. Uh, it's true. When, when I, you know, as soon as we get this membership, man, I can't get the membership going. I can't get my book going because I don't have time. Because I have, you know, but I, yeah, I, I need to clone myself. Uh But what I want to do is take each of these topics and talk about them in a little bit of depth, not too much, not to bore people, but 10 minutes, 15 minutes with some research so you can look it up. OK, and you can see it and then you can show you can show it to your. Um, to your oncologist. What brand of iodine do I recommend? The iodine I use is um, 
either uh, iodorol or iodine or or, or, or iodorol or lugols because they have a combination of iodine, which is molecular iodine, and iodide. Okay, remember why? Because iodide needs to be delivered in that form to mitochondria. That's why we have thyroid hormone to to depolarize mitochondrial membrane to make energy. Number one, the iodine is a cofactor in the metabolism of estrogens. Very, very important. Okay? So that's how you can get more estriol than estradiol and estrone. Why do you want that? Because estriol is, stops cancer. Estrone, estradiol promote cancer. I know. I need a few help. I do need help. I do need a help. Okay, so let's see here. What else we have here? Here we have a. Uh, where are we? Here's a new one. Okay, okay. So now we're on. Is we're we're. That was Instagram, and TikTok, post, comments. Do you eat raw brought raw broccoli or potatoes and potatoes? Not potatoes, but broccoli. You can eat raw potatoes. You slice them up. Real thin, like shoestring potatoes. Put some uh, pesto on them. Soak them for a while. Soak them in, you have to soak them in water for a while, and then put them in the refrigerator or something, so they become a little softer. But nah. What is this here? Okay, here's a question. Is regular blood donation a healthy thing to do if you have hemochromatosis? They probably won't let you donate it. But they will do what's called bloodletting. They'll let you, they'll take it out and throw it away. Um, uh, and that's just because hemochrom um, hemochromatosis is unfortunately a um, condition that is, that we do inherit. Um, and if you get one from mom and dad, and you have full blown. Hemochromatosis, you wind up with a really high iron, high ferritin. And the big problem there is that iron is, and we've mentioned this before, um, iron and copper are both in a 3 plus and a 2 plus um, valence, they call it. Uh, and when they get donated an electron, which they would from uh, vitamin C, ascorbate, they go down a notch. So the three plus iron, which be, which is ferric, becomes ferrous, and in the process, of donating the electron produces hydrogen peroxide, and that hydrogen peroxide is a an oxidant, which is great if it's in a cancer cell because it's going to kill the cancer cell because the cancer cell cannot neutralize hydrogen peroxide because it doesn't have catalase. Well, the liver does have catalase, but it doesn't have enough to take care of all the iron that would get oxid that would get turned into peroxide in the liver if you had hemochromatosis. Because you know, if you have hemochromatosis, you're not able to store it in your ferret. You're not able to get it there. It just it winds up getting deposited in your tissues and can cause many, many problems just because of that what they call the Fenton reaction, where a vitamin C Donates an electron to a an iron that's in a ferric and it becomes a ferrous producing peroxides. And okay, so my ratio is um, I don't have my computer. Anybody got a computer there? They have them on the they have them on these computer. I mean, anybody have a um, so what is my ratio if I have my iron is seventeen, my ferritin is forty one. It's like 2.1, something like that, right? You just divide the ferritin by the iron. Very low. That's good. I mean, that's a good ratio. No, it's a good ratio, but still, it's not going to be the same. It's going to be better when you get healthier, when you get your iron up, and you need to get your iron up. How do you get iron up? How do people get iron up without taking iron? Because you got to be careful with iron. Iron, cancer needs iron. So you don't want to just take iron if you have cancer. Um, Sometimes you might have to, but if you eat it, 
Make sure you have, you have enough hydrochloric acid in your stomach so that when you eat it, when you take non-heme iron, that means iron that doesn't come from blood. If you're a blood eater, if you eat blood, um, then, um, the, I mean, people that still like animal flesh, uh, corpse flesh, and they eat the blood of the flesh, uh, they, the, they, they get what they call a rare steak. What they mean is a bloody steak. So they like the blood. Uh, even those people, uh, well, they'll, they'll get they'll get some iron from that, yeah. But still not enough. But it's better if you have more acid in your stomach. So, but if you don't eat, uh, drink blood or animals, then uh, all the more you need a good acid in your stomach. Okay. So if you don't have hydrochloric acid, you can use. Um, um, what do you call it? Cider vinegar, apple cider vinegar, because it's got a pH of 2.0, which is pretty good. So you, you get, it's very easy. You just divide the ferritin by the iron and you get the ratio. Over 600 means there's a lot of stuff going on that you don't want to be going on. So you need to take care of that main thing that's happening. And it's probably cancer. Okay, here comes some TikTok too confusing. Make videos longer so the right amount of copper is good. Explain how to regulate copper levels. Yeah, I'm going to make longer uh, videos. We're going to for, for for members so that we can do this so I can have the time. Um, uh, the body kind of regulates uh, copper itself because uh, it keeps zinc and copper in sort of a 20 to 1 ratio like 20 times more zinc than copper. That's how it kind of how it works. All right. So um, it just, it absorbs it at that level. Cause you only, and, and that's a good, that's a good ratio because those, that that's probably the ratio in which you need it. Zinc is very, very important for multiple, multiple uh, re reactions and um, copper for not as many. But copper is absolutely essential for blood vessel growth, and you need new blood blood vessel growth because you're, um, you know, you're always repairing your body's always repairing itself, so it needs that. It needs that. Um, yeah, I gotta make my yeah. It's, I gotta make the videos longer. You're right, uh, Coolio. So Coolio, so. Um, that's why I'm, I'm going to I'll do that on YouTube and, and then on my channel, drlody.com. Yeah, you're right. Um, <clears throat> okay, well, here's a big question. I'm 50 and I'm having hysterect hysterectomy, hernia, hysterectomy hernia surgery at the same time. Also, ovary removal. What natural supplement can I take to avoid hormone replacement therapy? Well... First of all, do you need a hysterectomy? If the, if, the, if the fibroid is not causing you immense amounts of problems right now, and you're going to go through menopause very soon, sounds like it because you're going to take HRT therapy. You're going to find that the fibroid will not be as big anymore. Uh, but uh, should... Uh, so I don't know if you need surgery or not. The hernia you need to repair. You can repair that. Um, <clears throat> and you can take an ovary out. Why? There's some cysts on it. It's not cancer. It's, it's, uh, is it cysts? So they're going to take it out. You remember the surgeon's motto is when in doubt, take it out. When in doubt, take it out. I don't agree with that. Um Anyway, hormone replacement therapy can be very dangerous because in hormone replacement therapy, the synthetic hormones, they did not use the estrogens they got from the horse urine, um, which they then modulated and got patented. They didn't do that. Instead, they used, uh, they, they modified progesterone and turned it into what they call progestin. And they turned out retrospectively to find out that was a major cause of big problems. However, you need progesterone and 
estrogens to balance each other out. Therefore, what should you do? <clears throat> you get a bio, biologically identical hormone replacement therapy, and it has no risk of cancer, no risk of anything, but keeping you from shriveling up into a little old ball earlier than late, uh, later than earlier. Okay, it keeps you from doing that earlier than later. It keeps you from doing that. Okay, because we have all gotten older quicker, and if you're still young. You're getting older quicker because you're going to bed too late. I know it. You know it. Um, you're not eating the right foods. You know it. I know it. So you're going to get old quickly. And right now you think everything's cool. Wait till you wait another 10 years. You're going to see what happens. Okay. Remember something very important that the first 50 years of life are free. And the second 50 you have to earn problem with the first 50 is that you have to spend some of that first 50 learning how to earn that second 50. Believe me, the second 50 is not that easy to earn. I'm telling you, I'm not even halfway there yet, and it's hard. <clears throat> so, um, now, yeah, I don't know if you need that done, uh, Julio. I would, if you could contact me, on, go to drlody.com, let's talk about it. Because one thing about surgery, it's irreversible. Natural supplements, to avoid it, you can't. You can take natural supplements like yams, yams, and, well, uh, you know, you, you can, there's a lot of them, a lot of them. Maca, maca is very good, yams. Maca is a root. Um, yams. Uh, there's a lot of them. If you go to... Uh, you know, like any any really good uh, supplement store. You know, Sprouts has them. And Whole Foods. And just look under that, under women's health, and you'll, you'll find lots of them. But they're not quite the same as replacing. <clears throat> because one of the things that's going to happen with menopause uh, that can be a real problem is vaginal dryness. And that, that can be a real problem in terms of just... It's painful. Um, it can get, it can bleed easily. Yeah. It can increase uh, urinary tract infection. Uh, it makes uh, sex very impossible. So, the appropriate dosage for to answer your question, Sean, the appropriate dosage for fenbendazole. Fen really depends on what you're doing it for so um, usually if you're trying if you're going to do a complete parasite cleanse you would do maybe fenbendazole ivermectin niclosamide what are, one other one maybe i don't know tinidazole and just take them three times a day. Um, the fenbendazole is usually 222 milligrams. Ivermectin is 12 milligrams. You just take them and you take them throughout the day. You do it not for three weeks on, one week off, three weeks on, one week off, three weeks on, one week off, three weeks on, one week off. But if you have a really bad, bad liver, you shouldn't do that. You got to be careful. You got to try to get some guidance with this. Try to get some guidance with it. But um, those are, there are usual doses that you can do. So let me know how you're doing, you know, Sean. Give me contact. I'll let, let me know because there's different protocols. And we, you can test for them, actually. So, well, okay, Janet, doing a lot of stuff, and it seems very confusing. I understand Sub, what supplements to take. Uh, her, I guess, her two positive breast cancer. Been taking DIM. Um Someone told you not to take it. You're on Ibrantin and Astrazole. Feeling no problem, no side effects. Taking calcium, sulforaphane, D3, DIM, and melatonin. Really good start. Good start, but there's so much more. And a lot of stuff you can do in terms of diet. I have, them, I have that course, you know, drlody.com. There's a Stop Making Cancer course. It's about seven, eight hours. It's got a lot to... 
a lot of good information, important good information. Um, what you're doing is really, really good. There's just, there's some things you could be doing, um, but there's a lot of things you could be doing. And I don't know what stage you're in or what, I mean, what you're, um, you know, if it's active, did you have surgery, did you have chemo or all that sort of thing, but um, you, you're doing good things, you know, so, so now remember the dim, if you're, if, if you're eating broccoli in its raw form, you're going to be getting all of the sulforaphane and the DIM you need. Okay, if you're cooking it, you're not going to get any. So cooking is steaming. Yeah, anything is poison. So you're not feeling any pain, any, any, so that's good. The melatonin, 50 milligrams, is a really good start. you got to keep going with it. I'd go up to 100, 90, 120. Uh, supplements, you need to be taking iodine. You need to be taking... Uh, and then, and then, of course, work on your thyroid. You need to be taking that. Uh, be taking the vitamin C, A, and D. C, A, and D. Very important. C, A, and D. High doses of them. 40,000 vitamin A. 20 to 30,000 of vitamin D. Check your levels. And vitamin C, you take 10 grams in, 8 grams in a liter of water. And sip it slowly from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Okay. Why didn't this know? It's too weird. Uh, all right. Yeah. All right. Um, let me, let me, let me, let me go ahead. Uh, he hello, here in Quebec. This is from, uh, not sure who, Carol, Carol, uh, in Quebec, Canada, they don't allow doctors for, to prescribe vitamin C. If I take vitamin C in powder, do I have the same effect? Well, if you take it orally, you're going to get, and you take it enough the way I just said, you're going to get enough to take care of your physiological requirements, but you won't you won't get it to the level of uh, you can't you know vitamin C at high level. Uh, vitamin C has at least four major ways that it destroys cancer. Okay, one is where you get got to get certain levels and you need high doses IV, right? And that's the prooxidant effect where it directly kills it by producing peroxide, like we said before through the fentanyl reaction. But the other ways are that it depletes all the antioxidant, antioxidant enzymes inside of the cancer cell. Why? Because it's picked up by the GLUT1 receptor, which it upregulates. Cancer upregulates the GLUT1 receptor. And it's picking up dihydroscorbate. Uh, um, secondly, which causes, means the cell then has to get rid of it. And by using its antioxidant enzymes, so you deplete it. Uh, the other thing it does is epigenetic mechanisms, turning off the whole cancer process. And the third thing it does is block. Um, it is works with the deoxygenase enzymes to block HIF one alpha, which is the fundamental wound healing aspect of cancer. So it's pretty miraculous stuff. But take it. You got to at least take it that way. But if you're getting in Quebec and you can't get it, there's got to be someone. Got to be someone. I don't know. We're talking about Canada. We're talking about Trudeau. I don't know. I don't know anymore. But I don't know anymore about that. But the point is, you, then you should get somewhere if you can. But change your diet. Go online to my, go to drlody.com. Get the Stop Making Cancer course. Uh, it's seven or eight hours. And just, you, you know, it'll help you with all sorts of stuff in terms of lifestyle. Um, you can do a whole lot. And then if you put in fasting and cleansing, and all that stuff, and then you restore your faith, you restore your faith and learn to listen to God in your breath. Uh, is stage four neuroendocrine cancer with innumerable liver metastases curable? 
you know, just right off, uh, just right from that statement there, it sounds, it's a very, it's a very devastating sentence. Neuroendocrine just means that the cell it began in was a neuroendocrine cell. It doesn't mean anything different than another type of cancer. So it's not that, it's, that's not a different type. It's not, it, the biology of cancer is the biology of cancer. It's the same. But the innumerable liver metastases, now are they little, are they small, or what are the, what's going on? Are there some big ones? Is it blocking things? Is it causing your liver enzymes to go up? Is it making you, is it causing ascites? Um, if, if it's not causing those problems yet, and, you know, you can, there's a lot of things you do, and you got to find out, do you have any dental stuff going on? Do you have parasite? You, let's, let's get rid of everything. Let's make sure we're doing everything. Yeah. So the answer, and curable again, first of all, that's, I don't use that word. Can we, re, can you be restored to health? Yeah, I think you could if you, you've got it, but you got to get going. Okay, don't listen to them anymore. They don't know what they're doing. You got to know they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, okay, good question here, Colleen, uh, including the forbendazole, uh, uh, the, the ivermectin, fenbendazole, and lyclosamide. Took them for six, six weeks nonstop. Well, that's one way of doing it. And then you and then go on and off, on and off. Usually you do cycles, so you'd be off for a couple weeks, and then you can go back on. So it's usually do three or four weeks on, one week off. Got to also be taking, hope you're taking the antifungals when you're off. Uh, but then uh, after you've done three or four or five cycles, six cycles, and you're done with that, then I would take low doses, lower doses of ivermectin and fenbendazole just because they are going to help prevent cancer stem cells and stuff. 12 low doses, what do I mean? 12 milligrams a day, twice a day of ivermectin. Uh, fenbendazole, 222 milligrams a day, period. Just to, just, 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 just to keep things... Keep stuff down. They kill, can they kill cancer stem cells. Keep that happening. After we get rid of the, the big deal. I have a question. She has a diagnosis of stage 4 colon cancer metastasis liver in the form of two tumors. The doctors there were recommending a biopsy to fine-tune chemi uh, chemicals for future treatment. It seems to remember months ago. On a, on a, you mentioned something about biopsy of tumor removal. That's true. That's true. That's true. I, I, I agree. I agree. I wouldn't. I just think something's m missing. We've got to. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, why don't you add get, if you can get in touch with me again, because something's I, 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 I don't you, you know, when you do a biopsy of a tumor, you're going to do cause it to spread. Yeah. Now, if that biopsy now they were talking, I know what they were talking about. They were they, uh, they wanted to send it to Dr. Robert Nagorny, who's amazing. And Dr. Robert Nagorny will actually test it against specific he'll test live tumor against chemotherapy. And if you test live tumor against chemotherapy, that's much more relevant than doing taking a blood test and doing circulating tumor cells, and uh, which 99.9% .9 of them are probably not going to metastasize anyway, cannot metastasize, so they're irrelevant. So it's really important to do, to, to do it that way. But what I'm saying is that... Um, the, the way that... Um, Robert Nagorny does it is very special because that way you know in real time that hey, yeah, yeah, this works, this works. But again, remember, that's just the killing part. If we haven't pulled the plug on why it's happening, we've got to pull the plug on why it's happening. If we don't stop why it's happening, we're in trouble. Okay, we're in real trouble. We got to stop. So please get in touch with me if, if you can. Uh, it would be very good. Very good if we could talk again. So please get go to drlody.com and you can make an appointment. Um, okay, Sam. Sam. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, that's my opinion. My opinion is I don't know we necessarily need to do that. So I... I but like, yeah, I got to talk to you. Okay, good, Pamela. So your, 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 what is my opinion of receiving intravenous NID? Um, if you have follicular non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, currently in remission, at least PET scans showed no evidence of malignancy. I've heard it can cause cancer. No, 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 no. 
NAD plus is very good. You can also take the precursors. You can take um, NMN. You can take a five, five amino one Q. Um, there are the really the good things you can take as precursors. But uh, no, it's very very good. NAD is part of our body. It's not going to cause cancer. So don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. It's very very good. You'll feel good after. It'll give you, it'll give you a lot of energy. Okay, so hi, Dr. Lode. I have been diagnosed with breast cancer in August, and, and I have followed the SQ1 program by Chris Wark ever since. I am eating vegan diet, no sugar, very little carbs, lots of raw foods and fresh vegetables. I'm also taking a heap of supplements, et cetera, to build the immune system and maintain a more alkaline state, and I have weekly acupuncture. I've done some water fasting. And I am now underweight. However, my tumors doubled in the last three months, so I decided to have surgery in December. And two lumps removed. When I saw the surgeon a couple weeks ago, he said there were margins and that there were seven centimeter mass of DCIS and recommended a mastectomy. What do you think? I have a lymph, lymph biopsy tomorrow to determine if there is a duh, lymph biopsy. Okay, look it. They're going to do a lymph biopsy. What? To the determine. They're going to do a lymph biopsy to determine if there's any lymph, if there's any cancer in the lymph nodes. There better be cancer in the lymph nodes because that's what your lymph nodes are there for. They're there to make that. They're there to save your life. They're there to make an immune response. You know, they're going to just, they just cut, 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 burn, 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 burn. That's their answer. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Okay, so it's been growing. You've been doing all this stuff. Well, you're missing something. All that stuff that Chris Rourke said is fantastic. Perfect. But we're missing something. Is it uh, is it dental? Have you had root canals? Have you had extracted teeth? Do you have you know? Let's take it. Let's get rid of parasites. Have you had environmental toxin exposure? Do you have a, how much glyphosate do you have? I mean, we, let, let, let's let's keep going. I mean, we, I mean yeah. Does cut. Don't go for a lymph node biopsy. Come on. That's absurd. Please don't let they ask the doctor why. Ask him why. Ask the doctor why God gave you him lymph nodes. My God. They, they, I'm not mad at you. I'm not angry at you. It sounds that way. I'm sorry. Uh, I am completely opposed to chemo, but wonder if radiotherapy would be less harmful. No, no. For what? What do you want to do? Radio, radiotherapy. Listen, for what? You had the lumps removed. You've got some margins that are not clean. Okay, big deal. So let them... <clears throat> now you really have to deal with some, there's probably some mature cancer stem cells. How much of the margin? Let's see. Assuming uh, a mass. Two lumps removed. When I saw the surgeon a couple weeks ago, he said that there were margins and that I also had a centimeter mass of DCIS. Oh, of DCIS. And recommended a mastectomy. Um, Miriam, ask yourself a question or, or maybe you can answer it. Help me understand. So he didn't know that there was a seven centimeter mass until he took out the lump next to it or something. And then he says, oh my God, there was a seven, mil there was a seven centimeter mass. Uh, that's kind of confusing to me. I, 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 you, you really need a second opinion, and that's what I'm all about. You got to get call drlody.com, get into a second, go to my second opinion, get an appointment, and give me your records, and let's have a talk about what's going on, and let's figure out what's going on. You don't just start cutting blindly and saying, I'm going to, that's not the answer. If it was, listen, if surgery were the answer, folks, cancer would be easy, easy, right? You just cut it out and you're done. It's not the way it works. Not, the way it works. You know that. I know that. So please, yeah, don't let them. Uh, yeah. and, and, and again, lymph node. If it's got lymph nodes in there, okay. Yeah, that's what they're doing. That's what they're there for. That's why we have lymph nodes. All right, here you say, Rich, you just told me you, you, you said 
you spent three weeks at Oasis in December. That's pretty short time. I hope, yeah, it's not a, you know, people don't usually change their life in three weeks. It was as light, it was enlightening as well as beneficial to my immediate health issues, which was biochemical recurrence of your cancer eight years after prostate, prostatectomy. Okay, so now your PSA is starting to come up again. It's at 1.74. Prostatectomy. Prostatectomy. So um, your traditional doctor, he wasn't your traditional doctor. He was your conventional doctor. Traditional doctor is chief rolling thunder. A traditional doctor is uh, the kahunas of, of, uh, on Maui and on the big island. A traditional doctor is a traditional Chinese, an Ayurvedic, uh, a, a European doctor. Um, a shaman, uh, a South American shaman, African. <clears throat> they don't deserve tr the word traditional. Tradition is eons. This conventional madness has been around for a hundred years. Nothing. Okay, so. A few weeks ago, I received an update result from my last CT. They said one spot on my lung that had grown from set three to seven millimeters, and there are three cysts in the other lung. There are now additional spots on my spine. I need to decide if I will get immunotherapy treatment or not by tomorrow. I have read some very confusing information. Bottom line is, is it safe, effective procedure to fight cancer or is it dangerous? Please share your heart and experience fighting cancer treatments. Should I get immunotherapy, PS? Oh, David. Okay, good. I, I hope you got my answer. I'm, I'm glad you're you're on. Um, should you get? Uh, um, I I saw your yeah your stuff yeah. Um, can I? That was Rich. I was with before. I'm sorry. So you're extremely active, Rich. Rich, you're extremely active. You don't follow a raw diet but you eat healthy foods. Oh, they were healthy, and then you cooked them. Is that what you mean? If I had cancer, and someone told me that if I ate cow... The stuff that comes out of cows. Cow pies. If someone told me that if I eat cow pies, it's going to help, I'd, I'd get a tent and I'd move to the pasture. That's what I don't understand, everybody. If you got cancer, whatever it takes, do it. I know a lot of you are, but a lot of you are still negotiating. Why? Why? What the hell? Come on, man, Rich. You exercise a lot. You're doing a lot of great things. You don't follow. You don't. You don't follow a raw diet. It's not a raw diet. It's a real diet. Why is it real? Because the, the Earth and God made it. What humans make? You like what human makes? You like what humans make? You like what human? This is what humans make. You put it in the ground. Nothing happens for thousands and tens of thousands of years. Called artificial. You got to eat. You look at it, man. You want to get rid. You, you, so it's, it's you know, okay. You got to get rid of this, right? You got to get rid of this. You, you want this to go away. You, well, you want to restore your health, right? You want to restore your health. Don't you want to restore your health completely? So the PSA doesn't go up all that. I mean, you had a complete prostatectomy. My God. Um, yeah. So um, um, you're 67. You're young, man. Come on. How many years have you eaten cooked food? Uh, 67? Okay. Would you like to eat, would you like to keep eating another 67 years? Or at least another 30 years? 40 years? Well, call me, man. You're doing lots of good stuff, working real hard, but if you got to eat your food. Ah, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. The hell. All right, David, uh, uh, David, um, I think I mentioned to you, I hope I mentioned to you, 
that these immunotherapy you got to do everything it's not just immunotherapies are going to save your life it's not that way you got to do everything you got to eat right you got to go to bed early you got to move around all day you got to eat right you got to move around all day uh you already do good wonderful things with your life i know that um um uh, the immunotherapies are, are uh, you know, a lot of times they're not safe. A lot of times they are. It's really hard to say. And you need to have a hot tumor. By the way, we were talking about tri tocotrienols before. I just want to remind you that uh, tocotrienols really can do a very, uh, um, I mean, I'm not tocotrienols. We didn't get a chance to talk about ivermectin. I really want to talk about ivermectin. But the lady who asked about it, ivermectin is one of those things that can turn a cold tumor into a hot tumor. A cold tumor into a hot tumor. That's really cool. Remember, a hot tumor is a tumor surrounded by T cells. And the immunotherapy goes in there and unlocks the T cells that are blocking the whole process called T regs, unlocks those. And then the cells, they work really good. But if you don't have it, and, and triple negative breast cancer usually doesn't have it. But anyway, for David Cook, uh, it's everything. It's not just those immunotherapies. And those immunotherapies could work. Yeah, there's confounding information for sure, for sure, because, and it depends on many things. But for years, we had wonderful successes with prostate, with people in, before long before there was what, they, what they're calling immunotherapy. I don't necessarily call it immunotherapy. Yeah, I mean, for me, I think if you... If the immuno, I tried the immunotherapy before. If it, if it seems to work and it doesn't hurt, you don't feel really bad. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Do it. But you got to do everything else. I'm telling you. Okay, everyone, it's so late now. It's been two hours. So what cup, and uh, namaste and aloha to everyone. Bye bye. <laughs>